Pigs and their relatives are widespread throughout the world, found in every continent except Antarctica. In this video, we'll be giving an overview on their evolution. Pigs belong to an order of animals known as Artiodactyla, or the even-toed ungulates. This includes everything from hippos, camels, deer, to giraffes. Most artiodactyls possess what's known as selenodon teeth, which are low-crowned, triangularly cusped teeth that are well adapted for breaking up plant matter. This dentition, however, isn't present in pigs, which have more rounded teeth better suited for crushing anything from roots to meat. This has led researchers to place pigs alongside other non-selenodont artiodactyls such as hippopotamuses at the base of the artiodactyl evolutionary tree. Other organizations place pigs, however, as more distant from hippos, but in most constructions, they're generally one of the most basal artiodactyls in addition to being evolutionarily distinct from other artiodactyls in the grouping. What this means is that pigs evolved relatively early during the Cenozoic. The exact estimates are still a subject of debate, but it's likely that the ancestors of pigs split off from other artiodactyls sometime around 55 million years ago. While this line led to our modern pigs, there are a few other types of extinct animals worth mentioning that could have been part of this group as well. One of the most notable ones comes in the form of the Intelodonts. Evolving 37 million years ago, likely around Central Asia, they're commonly referred to as the Hell Pigs even though they're still not true pigs. Their diet was omnivorous, just like our extant pigs, but their more robust teeth, which were well handled to tear apart meat, allowed for a higher level of carnivory and scavenging. In fact, their entire morphology was quite a bit more robust than those of modern pigs, with burly bodies and prominent zygomatic arches. But whether or not intelodons can even be considered pig relatives is still a murky subject. Some believe that they could instead be closely related to whales and hippos, as a result, I won't cover them too much here, but rest assured they're a fascinating group that definitely deserve a video of their own in the near future. The line containing those genera strongly resembling extant pigs wouldn't show up in the fossil record until roughly 33 million years ago. The members of this grouping, known as Suina, bore strong morphological resemblances to the pigs of today, and by the end of the Eocene, this group split up into two major branches. The first branch would lead to Tyasuidae, which would give rise to our modern-day peccaries or javelinas, found throughout the New World, with some of the earliest members including genera such as Parcheris from North America. Peccaries, while very similar to pigs in appearance, have a few notable differences, the most prominent being the shape of their tusks. In peccaries, these are sharp and straight, and would occlude on contact, perfect for cutting into meat, though these animals are still omnivorous. The tusks, of course, would be useful for defense, where they can even create a harsh noise through clattering their tusks together to scare off enemies. The branch containing New World and Old World suis diverged sometime around the range of 39 to 34 million years ago, where the Old World branch from Suina would later lead to the Suidae. The first major fossil evidence for Suidae appeared during the Miocene, around 20 million years ago, after having evolved around Southeast Asia. Suids lack the occluding canines of their peccary relatives, Instead, their canines form less straight tusks. As we'll later see, they can take on a variety of appearances among the true pigs, but for the most part, they're similarly used as defensive and intraspecies combat tool. As the Miocene progressed, so too did the diversification of Suidae, with four notable subfamilies evolving during this period. Lystriodontinae was one such family, containing genera such as Cubanacurus, an over 1,000 pound pig with two small horns over its eyebrows and a very prominent forehead horn, present on males. There are other families such as Chinotherinae, Hyotherinae, Tetraconodontinae, but look, and I'm saying this because I feel I can open up to you guys as my audience, but from what I've researched, there isn't too much special about these guys. Like, I hate to use the word generic pig relatives, but I mean, it's just one of those groups that kind of like, they got it right the first time, you know, just kind of like made little adaptions here and there. Tapirs, another similar group. Actually, I love tapirs. Maybe I'll cover them later. Generic or not, however, suids were widespread during the Miocene, their growth culminating in the late Miocene with the evolution of the subfamily Suinae a little over 10 million years ago. But as soon as they expanded over the Old World by the beginning of the Pliocene, many of these groups began to go extinct, leaving only the Tetraconodontinae and the Suinae. By the Pleistocene, only the Suinae remained. Why exactly these extinctions occurred isn't fully clear, but as with many species that went extinct during the period, climate change may have been the root cause. The Pliocene and especially the Pleistocene were marked by a general global cooling, 
and the subsequent environmental changes may have led to the decline of the non suinae subfamilies. All that said, let's move on to discussing the suinae. The most evolutionarily distinct suids are the babarusas. These curious looking pigs are found throughout several Indonesian islands. From a glance, their most distinctive feature is their curved tusks, used for fighting between males. Interestingly, and perhaps more morbidly, if these tusks are not regularly ground down through use, they can eventually grow into the animal's skull. The position of the babarusas on the pig family tree has been a subject of debate for quite a while. They've often been lumped together with other pigs as all part of Suinae, but other researchers have chosen to put these funny looking animals in their own subfamily known as Babarusinae. Regardless, as said before, they are the most taxonomically distant pigs, having split off from all other extant members of Suinae 13 million years ago in the Miocene. But although molecular analyses give us a general indication of when Babarusa split off, the actual fossil history of these animals is still poorly understood. The next major branch of modern pigs contain the African suids. This includes everything from the warthog to the red river hog to the giant forest hogs. They inhabit several different biomes and habitats from savanna to tropical rainforest. Despite being known as an African group, it should be noted that in the recent ice age some of these species could be found as far north as Eurasia. But finally this leads us to the last branch of pigs, which includes the genus Porcula, containing the tiny pygmy hog and the genus Seuss. Seuss, or, or sus, or however you want to say it, is perhaps the most important genus in this video. Beyond containing various warty pigs found throughout the Philippines and the rest of Southeast Asia, Seuss also contains Seuss scrofa, better known as the wild boar. While this animal evolved in Southeast Asia during the early Pleistocene, its range extended far, far beyond that. Today, it can be found in the frigid European north all the way to the more tropical regions of South Asia. The adaptability of this particular species cannot be understated, as it effectively wrapped its range around the Old World, only stopping at harsh enough barriers such as the Russian North and the African deserts. But as many of you know, this species is known for something else very important. It's the ancestor of our domestic pigs. Bred for food, the taming and rearing of these animals has led into several notable changes in appearance, namely its reduction in tusk size and an overall lack of fur on many individuals. Now. Given that pork is haram, you'll never catch me eating a piggy. But the domestication of the wild boar has only further expanded this animal's range across the world. Many species have gone feral throughout areas such as North and South America, Australia, and various other islands, to the detriment of local fauna. Their ravenous appetites and skill at eating the young of animals, as well as many native species' eggs, has been a blight on ecosystems to which they've been introduced. Naturally, I'm not blaming pigs here rather than the silly humans who didn't rein them in properly, but it's still a part of their history worth noting. And on the subject of the pig's history, one thing you guys might have noticed is that we didn't spend too much time talking about morphological differences. As said before, pigs have stayed relatively constant in terms of appearance with slight alterations in size or tusk shape or anything else like that throughout their about 50 million year history, give or take. What's really more important the grand scheme of things is this animal and this lion's adaptability throughout the world. We see them inhabit various different environments, various different continents, and as said before, they're present everywhere today except for Antarctica. And I think that's really the big thing about pigs. They're just another example of a very well-known group of animals that belie an incredible success story. If there are winners and losers in the game of evolution, then pigs have won, and won big. And with their introduction in many different parts of the world, it's likely that these hogs will only continue to win. 